Hello everybody and welcome to another general vlog video. Today we're helping dad out and we're putting new brakes on the Lincoln. It's a 2011 Lincoln MKX. Lincoln... Yes, MKX. All wheel drive. Needs brakes all the way around so that's where I'm headed to now is well, let's just get you down here and as you can see yesterday was beautiful out it was in the 60s today's in the 40s rained all morning so it's kind of cold out so yeah i did bring the heater out knock the chill off the dampness so let's move it out of the way here. and get you guys right in here and first thing, of course, we're going to do is take the tire off. So, oh, let me get down here. Noise alert. Going to be a little noisy. Lincoln's got some big old tires on it. All right, let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, it needs pads. Uh, rotors look really good. Um, got a little bit of emergency brake on the back of there. All right, so let me go ahead and get this caliper off. And we will uh, hopefully do this fairly quick. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is grab your half inch wrench and you got a, a socket right here, or not a socket, but a wrench, uh, a bolt right here. You just want to, I've already loosened this one. You just want to loosen that up, take it out. That's your top one. Bottom one is going to be a sensor, so you're going to have to use your open end, and you're going to put your half inch on it. Once you've got it loosened, just kind of take this sensor off. Long-winded, a lot of threads. And there that is, that's your bottom one. And then you just want to take a screwdriver and kind of pry up underneath a little bit and then pop your caliper off. Lay your caliper on top so you're not, you know, causing any stress. Now you can see these brake pads aren't horrible. They're probably half. So you want to take your brake pads off. There's the front one. And now you need to recompress this cylinder back in. Now what I normally use for that is these and get this up here and get it kind of stationed on the back and the, the top here. Yeah, that's not going to work. I was afraid of that. I may have to go get a C-clamp. I just was not able to get, when it was on there, I was not able to get the uh, screwdriver in. Let me try to put the bolts back in. Because I have to go over to my house to get my big C-clamp. And I'd rather not if I don't have to. We're going to see about putting these back in and then take a larger screwdriver and put on the back of that cylinder. Uh, yeah, I need to actually put that in there a little bit more. Now if you've got a big breaker bar sometimes this can be easier. <laughs> I 
I know a lot of you guys out there right now are cringing because the last thing you seen me do was put that big pair of pliers on there trying to compress the cylinder. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. You actually have to have a special tool that will turn. They're not like the old calipers that just pressed in and pressed out. That's why you can't put a screwdriver in there and pry them or anything of that nature. Uh, am I going to own up to my mistake or just tell you guys I was trying to teach you a lesson? I was trying to teach you guys a lesson. Don't do what I tried to do. Yeah, I thought I knew what I was doing and apparently I didn't. I didn't hurt anything because I didn't put any pressure on it. Uh, so I got the tool on its way and we'll get the correct tool and we'll finish up this video. And if anything, learn by my mistakes and just learn from everybody's mistakes. We all make mistakes. If we can own up to it, learn and move past it, then we're a better person for it. So hopefully I'm getting ready to be a whole lot better person because I had no clue. So let's get that tool on here and we'll show you the correct way to do it. Okay, so once getting the proper tool, which is this, and this part that's on here, you line everything up, it's got instructions, read the instructions to tell you what backing plate to use, which is these, which go on there and slide up into the pins, and also on the back of your brake pads, you have a locating pin, you see that right there. And so you want to make sure that your locating pin is straight up and down, which I'll show you here in just a minute. So then you get a hold of this and you just start twisting it in. And you also want to take a little bit of silicone and wow, that's not a little bit. That was a lot bit. And just kind of spray it on there around that rubber boot to keep that rubber boot from twisting. And you just keep screwing them in until they go all the way in. And that's all that you do on this. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple once you figure out the correct way to do it. So that being said, um, That's it. It's that simple. I just got to keep screwing this thing in. I'm going to go get me a, a socket on a handle to kind of do it a little bit easier and we'll go from there. So anyways, I got this little handle it makes it a whole lot easier. I just kind of slip it over top of that and crank it. And you just want to go until you can feel when it'll stop. I'm sure. But and then I'll show you kind of an important thing on it. Once I get there, I'll show you how to locate that locating pin. And I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on it. Okay, now there I'm to my stop point. So now I'm going to back it off just a little bit. I said I was. Okay. I can't actually see. I'm just going to grab this right here. I can't see the locating pin. Okay, now I see it. So now I want to come back up to the top. I think that's pretty well straight. Take the little tool back off. Yes, that is straight. Take the little tool back off. And like I said, th this piece here, it's magnetic. It just fits right on there. And that's the one that fits the spacing of my caliper here. You can see a, a bottom slice and a top slice. So, and like I said, let me get the new pads. Okay, and with the new pads, See that little locating pin I was telling you about? You want that to be straight up and down. You want this up here to be straight up and down because these are straight up and down. And remember the curve is for the rotor. So you put these in. 
just like that. Get the back side in. Just like that. And then we're going to take the caliper. We can see I have my locating pin straight up and down. We'll put the locating pins in there. And I do want to check and make sure, okay, these are the other side. Not that it matters. And you just want to kind of put everything back together. We'll find our top bolt. <laughs> which is right here, that goes towards the top. Get it in there hand tight. Not overly tight, but just hand tight. Get the bottom, this is your sensor, get your bottom sensor, which also is your bottom bolt. You get that in there hand tight. I'm going to look and make sure that my, my pins are lining up. And they are. Okay, so now I'm going to tighten everything down. And that's it. The brakes are replaced now. Now that you've got that easy little tool. And I don't know about your parts place. But my parts place will rent me that tool. It's basically loan a tool. And it's 60 bucks for two days, but we use it as long as we don't break it. We take it back. We get our money back. And that's through O'Reilly's. It's not a plug. I'm not affiliated with them or anything. I'm just saying that's who we used. All right. Once your top and bottom bolts on your calipers tightened and everything's in place, then you just put the tire back on and put your lug down. Always go in a star pack. And that's it. Now I will take the breaker bar. Let's jack down. After I'm done, I always take the breaker bar and once again in a star pattern, I just make sure that everything's tight. See, I didn't like the way that one was. Everything else is tight. <clears throat> so now we're ready to go. Now I'm not going to film you guys on the back side. On the other side, because we just watched one of those. I will, however, bring you back on the front side. So, <clears throat> it's as simple as that. Once you get the right tool, it's really simple to do. Bring you back on the front side. All right, let's get this front tire off of here. Noise alert. It might be a Lincoln, but you, if you're careful, you still lean the tire up against it. It's just a car, people. It's just a car. All right. So here we have, hmm, lots bigger. Um, let me go get the proper wrench, and I'll bring you right back. All right. So it's 5 8 So let's get that loosened. And yes, I had already pre-loosened it. I don't think I did the bottom one though. We'll find out here in just a second. And I'm probably right in your guys' way. 
get you up here a little bit better on the action. I'm just taking this one out. Hopefully this one will go smooth. The back ones weren't bad once I figured out that I had to have a certain tool. They weren't bad at all. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I did loosen that bottom one. All right. So they were real easy to loosen and no problems. If I run across any problems, I'll, I'll sure tell you guys. But so far, no problems whatsoever. Rotors still feel really good. That they're a little colored, but that's probably because somebody's rode the brakes or something. But yeah, there there's no problems with them whatsoever. And there's the caliper. Ah, now I was right when I thought that I had already changed brakes on a Lincoln before. Apparently, I did the front brakes because these do not take the screw in. Oh yeah, this back one, yeah. It's only got about a sixteenth of a pad left, so I'm glad we're doing that. Rotor feels really good. So now we have to get to where we can do these, and since it's a double cylinder, um, let's see. Trying to figure out my best line of approach on this. And I would say I need to get two C-clamps. I would rather do two than one. Two C-clamps and clamp right there. Okay. So I had to go to my house and get my big C-clamps. And I use two because there's a bolt in the center I don't want to hit. So all you basically do is just turn them in just a little bit. I go kind of slow with them. Uh, you are forcing fluid back up into the master cylinder. So just go kind of slow, a turn or so at a time. And, you know, it's like I said, just go slow. You're not in it. This isn't a race. You're not in any hurry. This is why I tried to use the pliers on the back. And I thought that I was going to have to go home and get this. these clamps because I knew I had done brakes, not on this vehicle, but I've done brakes on Lincoln's before, but very rarely do you ever put back brakes on. All right, now I'll go ahead and grab this and make sure that I'm where I need to be on that one and that one is. Okay, then you take them back off. And if you'll notice, I did put an old brake pad in there. That's very important. Just put that old brake pad in there. And now you can see the cylinders are all the way back where they need to be. So now let's get the front brakes, which are right behind me. All right. Get these front brakes opened up here. shrink wrap these things once again doesn't matter which you use for the fronts or which you use for the backs they're both the same there's no squealer pins on this one this is for the other side and you just basically remember I'm just gonna lay that there right now Remember that the curved spot is for the rotor, inside the rotor. The asbestos part, or whatever they call this, goes towards the caliper. So I will put this one in there. Hmm. 
Hmm. I can't see. <laughs> I need to get my glasses on and my flashlight. Okay, there we go. Now, once you can see, it slides right in there. So we'll slide that one in. And we'll grab the new back one. Once again, the brake pad part goes towards the, the rotor. So you locate, find your little locating pin holes. Get the bottom one in there. Get the top one in there. Slide them right together. Now, if we did our job right, this caliper will now fit right back on over that. And look at there, it does. So now it's just uh, putting back in the bolts. They got the long pins on them. They're already greased. Once again, I should have took my glasses off. There's little rubber seals, little, little rubber. They almost look like uh, accordions. Make sure that they're in there correctly. And then slide that through. Start tightening it up. I'll find my front one. I mean my top one. Same thing. Make sure it's got nothing gritty on it. And we'll find our 11 sixteenths. Yeah, I found everything but the 11 sixteenths. I'm setting on it. And we'll get this started. Okay. I'm going to have to kind of get right where you guys are so I can get straight on this thing. Alright, sorry about that. I had to move you guys out of the way so I get that in there and get a straight feel for it. Uh, now that's on there, just put it on. Tighten it up, both top and bottom. And once I get them tight, I do take the hammer and give them three little good taps. Now I'm not hitting really hard, but I want everything secure. So there it is, that's front brakes. So I'll grab the tire and that's it, you know, top and bottom. And that's all that we messed with. You know, we'll just kind of look Pads all or pads are all new and the rotor looks good. Now this thing, no more than my dad drives it, will last a really, 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 really long time. Probably as long as he owns his car. So now that you got them all started, definitely always start them by finger and then take and run them in. Remember at a star pattern. Turn this off for just a second because of the noise. Okay, now that the air compressor is stopped, let me get you guys moved back here. And let me get everything out of the way here. And we'll let this jack down. Maybe. There we go. Go ahead and send that over to the other side. Then we'll take it, we'll take our breaker bar once again at a star pattern. And there we go. Now, once again, I'm not going to show you guys the other side because it's the same thing just flipped on the other side. Okay, so now that we're all done, one thing that you want to do 
is get in, start it out, and pump those brakes out. That's the first thing that you want to do before you ever do anything. See? Four, five, six pumps, and I'm up to a very hard break. Didn't have to bleed them, didn't have to do anything. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go take her for a spin and see uh, what we've got going on. All right, let's make sure that nothing's wrong. And it's trying to connect my cell phone. So, we'll go ahead and take this little thing on out. Make sure that the brakes feel good. I don't remember what they felt like before, but I mean, we do have brakes. They do seem, to me, they seem a little squishy, which they can't be. But I'm not used to driving this vehicle. I've only driven it like one other time. Yeah, they do stop really good. Like I said, I'm not used to this vehicle. I probably should have drove it beforehand. But I didn't think of that. But I think he said he heard a squealing noise, which I don't think he did, or at least not from the brakes, because there was no metal to metal at all. Now my truck has really hard brakes, and that's what I'm used to. I see my neighbors up here just built a new garage right there. Beautiful, 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 bigger than their house. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? So I would say it's absolutely 100% a success. So now it's just, um, I drove it around a little bit, so I'll take it back in the garage and recheck all the lug nuts and make sure that there's no leaks and everything's full fluids and everything oil transmission fluid brake fluid coolant make sure everything's full for him and then be done all right oh, sorry about that little awkward of an angle there let me take you back over here. I gotta grab these two bags of trash and take them, put them in his trash can for him. So anyways, that being said, everybody, that's how you put brakes on a 2011 Lincoln MKX, right? Did I say it right this time? Yes, MKX. Like I said, apparently I've done front brakes before. I've never done the rear brakes. You live, you learn. I didn't hurt anything, so that's the best way. So just double check all your work. It's really a simple job. Now that I've done it, if you pulled another one right in behind it, I could do all four of them in 30 minutes or less. No hard work, didn't even get that dirty. <clears throat> so all that being said, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, like, please subscribe. Once you subscribe, smash that bell notification, go all the way up to the top and click all so you'll be notified on every video that we post and share us on your social media pages. And speaking of which, why don't you follow us on Facebook, General Vlog Video. And if you ever want to help YouTubers out, not just me, but any YouTuber that you watch, watch the videos. It really helps our channels grow. With all that being said, hope you guys have a great day and even better tomorrow and an awesome night. And I might be able to learn how to do brakes on a 2011 Lincoln MKX, but I'm still my own cameraman. So we know that that means i got to get up close and personal and poke you in the ear. We'll see you on the next video. Have a super great day.